All right, this is John Cola with DiscountJuicers.com. So we have another exciting episode for you. Today I'm in the windy city of Chicago and where I'm at today is actually McCormick Place, which is the largest convention center in all of the United States of America. And I'm here today to check out the 2017 International Houseware Show, which is a trade show only for basically anything for your home, anything for your house, you know, from like laundry baskets to small kitchen electrics, to knives, to forks, to sausage cookers, sausage, everything you could think of, right? But what I'm here specifically for are some of the appliances that allow you to eat more fruits and vegetables because those are simply the healthiest foods on the planet. Uh, this event is basically uh, big four, lar big four uh, halls or rooms the size of football fields and then some. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys inside and uh, share with you guys the best exhibitors at this year's houseware show. So now I'm inside the 2017 International Houseware Show and basically there's basically like big football field sized rooms of just booths and booths and booths and exhibitors and products and products and products. As you guys can see, it just goes all the way down there. You know, uh, some of the booths that don't interest me too much are some of the bigger guys, you know, in the front that have the big booths. They don't tend to innovate too much, so I really like some of the smaller companies that tend to have more innovation and actually products are going to help you solve some of your problems in the kitchen. You know, I'm specifically into products that help people eat more fruits and vegetables because they are the best foods on the planet and, uh, you know, keep them in the most nutrient dense format as possible you know there's companies with different deep fryers and all these gadgets and things that could really do a lot of damage to your food but what i thought i'd share with you guys in this episode is some of the products that allow you to preserve the food preserve the nutrients the most in the food and this year is the major introduction of the vacuum blending technology which is going to revolutionize blending and i'm sad to say that you know companies like vitamix and blendtec and some of the big boys have been making blenders for a long time they don't have any black vacuum blending technology. They have the, still the same old blenders. And you know, I want companies to innovate and make things better. And as much as a Vitamix is actually quite powerful, at the same time, what people don't realize is that, you know, a standard blender without a vacuum system on it is oxidizing the nutrients really rapidly and really quickly. You know, there's one uh, doctor that teaches living in raw foods and he says that it could destroy up to like 90 to 95 percent of the nutrients in the mixture. Now I don't know that I'd go that far but you know definitely as you'll learn in this episode when I visit some of the vacuum blending companies including the company to first make and sell vacuum blenders, they're actually from Japan, you guys are going to really learn the benefits of vacuum blender. So I want to encourage you guys, if you guys are looking into buying a blender like right now, hold off just a little bit until the vacuum blending technology comes out and it's definitely worth the wait for sure. Um, the other thing I want to say is that, you know, while there's many companies that I'll be showing you guys in this episode, there's some companies that are actually not appearing at the show, which really on some levels troubles me. So, you know, Huram is a brand that I get asked often a lot about John, what's your opinion on the Huram juicer? You know, and well, it's, my opinion does not go up or get better when Huram is actually not at the largest trade show for the, you know, North America and even the whole, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> northern, uh, you know, continents here, northern hemisphere continents. Um, they're not even here showing or promoting their newest products or their products at all. So that's why I cannot recommend the Huron brand because if they're not here, that means they don't really care about U.S. and the distrib distribution in the U.S. And more importantly, like, what is their customer support going to be like if you do end up buying a Huron juicer in the U.S.? So for that reason, I encourage you guys to look towards other juicer brands. In addition, another area that I'm not going to be covering today is actually the China Hall. So there's a big China Hall and, you know, I walked the whole hall the other day and there's like booth after booth after booth of different knockoff products. You know, companies are knocking off the vacuum blenders or knocking off the different slow juicers. And let me tell you guys, right? Number one, a lot of those companies are infringing on patents. So if they import their products into the United States, you know, they may, may have patent lawsuits and then they're gonna have to stop importing their products in the United States, which means if you bought one of their products and then they stop importing them, you're no longer going to be able to buy parts for those products. In addition, in general, the products I've tested that come out of China are generally of lower quality uh, on average, but not always, right? So I really want 
you guys to you know uh, buy a brand with a name recognition that have actually been established and around for a while so that you know the item you purchase because some of these high-end products you know uh, do cost some money um, they do have a good solid warranty so that you'll be backed up and assured that you'll have a working product for many years to come some of the juicers and blenders that I'll be sharing with you guys might have a 10 or even 15 year warranty in this episode so I like that a lot and the other thing I want to say before I actually hit the show floor and share with you guys some of the new cool products of this year is that you know I travel here I do a lot of walking actually here on my iPhone here um, you could see that my health app, I don't know if you guys could see that, but there's a big spike. One day I walked literally like 25,000 or 30,000 steps in one day to walk up and down every one of these aisles. And then the next day I walked, you know, another 10,000 mile, 10,000 steps. It was like 3,500 steps. That's how I stay in shape. <laughs> and that's how I spend some of my time to find the new products to share with you guys so that you guys don't have to come to the show. I mean, this is a trade only show, so unless you have a business and stuff, you can't get in here. And let me be honest with you, most of the stuff here does not really even interest me. So I do a lot of walking and I, I do a little stopping and then I do a lot of talking to learn more about the products so that I could better educate you guys about some of the new products that could really help you and uh, benefit your life. So the final thing I'd like to say before I get down to the show floor is that if you guys enjoy this video, enjoy the work that I do, I would encourage you guys to support me and my work so I can continue to do it. I love what I do, I love coming to the trade shows, I love demonstrating the juicers, I love making all the videos I do for you guys to basically just educate you guys and tell you guys the truth about what's going on you know, with the juicers when I test them or actually in the industry, how trends are going and what's going on um, because you know, everyone in the companies that I'll go down to, they're gonna say, our juicer's the best. And all right, so your juicer may be the best for certain things, but it might not be the best for other things. And that's why where I come in and I kind of really reveal the truth about these appliances and allow you to make an informed decision. And I think this is where really the market needs to go. Um, you know, people just need to have the proper information and not just all this marketing spiel uh, so that they could buy the right products. And as much as I don't believe in products and, you know, the best juicers I'll say are our teeth. <laughs> Unfortunately, most people are lazy and they don't chew their food to mush, so I think juicers and blenders and some of the appliances that I'll show you guys today that actually makes the food texture softer or even concentrates the volume you could get are definitely essential. So yeah, if you enjoy my videos, please support me in my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. Um, that allows me to continue to do the work I do, and I want to thank you guys in advance for those of you guys that will purchase from me, and I want to thank you guys who have purchased from me in the past. Oh, the final thing I want to say before I get down there is that, you know, some of the products that I'll be sharing with you guys in this episode are previews, right? They're not even available yet and some of them may not ever become available, right? So the best way to get notified when these products are available is subscribe. Click that subscribe button right down below to be subscribed to my YouTube channel, right? I get these machines before anybody else does. You know, the company send me review models, you know, so I can start testing them, make videos about them, promote them, and and I could see how they work, right? Before they're released to the public. So then I'll make a video, uh, you know, to let you guys know that they're available. I'll also make a demonstration video of the product to let you guys know how it is. And then of course, when I put out the videos, that's when they are available. Otherwise, they're not yet available. <laughs> so, um, you know, you can try to comment below and ask when the things are available, but I'm gonna do my best in this episode to share with you guys when they're available. And the best way to know when they're available is not just, you know, shoot me an email, John, is this available? When is it gonna be available? Just click subscribe right down below. And as soon as it's available, swear to God, <laughs> I will have a video on it <laughs> so that you guys know it's available and also more importantly than just knowing that it's available just because it's available it doesn't mean it's going to be a good product i'm showing you guys some stuff and they look really cool but i got to test them to see actually how they work so i would encourage you guys to hold off on purchasing any of this new technology until i test it and i give it my thumbs up and and show you guys the pros and cons of each one you know because there will be a whole bunch of vacuum blenders out there and it may be confusing to some of you guys which one to buy and I don't really know until I test them all myself personally and I can show you guys the results. Anyways, let's go ahead and head down to the show floor and show the guys the new products for 2017. So now I want to show you guys actually the first exhibitor that literally started a revolution in the housewares industry and actually just it's a company behind me, it's called Testcom. And for those of you guys that live in Japan or been to Japan may know this company because they're a pretty big company in Japan. They make a lot of beauty care products and kitchen appliances. Here in America, we're not familiar with Japanese companies, but basically what they've done is they've created the world's first vacuum blender. They originally came out with this in 2013 and it's now, uh, they've been through several generations to actually keep improving and improving and making it better. And now they're on their third generation that they're displaying here 
at the houseware show that actually I want to explain to you guys more about the vacuum blending technology and also the world's first vacuum blender actually made in Japan, not China. So now I want to introduce you guys to the concept of vacuum blending for those of you guys that may not be familiar with it because this is something totally new to America. I mean, even if you own a Vitamix or a Blendtec or some other kind of blender, right? Those are just standard high power blenders and the high power may be good in some senses because they're going to grind your food up and even the seeds up really good. But the problem is inside those high power blenders, if you look inside, it's like a little vortex or a little tornado, right? We know tornadoes, if you live in Kansas, you don't want tornadoes, right? Because they rip up your house, right? They'll rip up the Walmart roofs, right? They'll do, they'll do a lot of destructive damage. And every time you flick on your blender, they got a little vortex inside the blender that's oxidizing your food to the max. And besides just oxidizing the food, it's actually injecting little tiny air bubbles into the food, which is even worse because when you're done blending, all those air bubbles are dispersed inside the food and as they pop or rise up or whatever right it's oxidizing your food even more so you know there's uh, people in the raw foods movement that say you know blending destroys 90 to 95 percent of the nutrients in the blended food now I don't know that I'd go that far because I'd still rather have anybody even blend in a high-speed blender than you know eat some kind of like a candy bar or McDonald's or something like that but right I like to teach good, better, best, and simply from what I've learned and what I've seen and the data I've seen, vacuum blending is simply the best because what it does, it actually sucks out all the excess air in there and uh, leaves a chamber that um, has less air and less volume of air. So now when you blend, even though it has that same vortex, right, there's not as much destructive damage going on to all the nutrients in the foods that you're eating. Consequently, because the nutrients are preserved, right, a few other things are going to happen. Number one, your food's going to taste better, you know, so when you blend things, a lot of the flavor seems to vanish. It just goes away. Where does it go? Well, when the nutrients are oxidizing, right, those are some of the flavor profiles, you know, some of the polyphenols and uh, some of the different essential aromatic oils and volatile organic compounds that are quite volatile and with oxidation, they disappear. So under vacuum blending, when you suck out the excess air, you're gonna get more flavors, you know, right? You're also not gonna have all those bubbles that may give you uh, gas or bloating when drinking the blended mixture. They've done lots of research in Japan, right? Japan, they got some super smart people over there, right? And they've started this machine in 2013 because they found that, uh, you know, the Japanese people found that, hey, when I blend up an apple, it turns a brown and it oxidizes. And then, they, then the company said, well, hey, how can we make a better blender? And that's when they discovered and uh, figured out and patented the world's first vacuum blender that came out 2013. Since then, they've been making it better. And uh, so here's the thing, if you're thinking, John, it's not natural to blend inside a vacuum blender. That would never happen in nature. Well, I want you guys to think again, right? Think, I like how they do their advertising here. You know, the Japanese people, they're very smart. Check it out. Amount of oxygen inside container is the same environmental as peak of Mount Everest. I don't know, but I saw one of the Mount Everest climbing movies and like people were losing their lives and stuff. The air is very thin up there. They need, you need to breathe with like these big tanks and stuff on your back. Otherwise you're gonna suffocate because there's less oxygen, less air up there. It's quite thin, right? So if you were blending up on, uh, you know, <laughs> the peak of the Mount Everest, you would get the same amount of oxygen in your blender. Unfortunately, most of us don't live on the peak of Mount Everest and I don't even know how you'd run a blender up there. Anyways, but you could do that with the Tescom vacuum blender, right? And so here's some of the research and I can't read this research because I don't, uh, you know, read uh, Japanese here, but I trust the Japanese. So here's some of the data they've got, you know, some of the different nutrient levels in uh, different items when they uh, vacuum blend versus when they don't. And let I me mean, look at that. Depending on the specific nutrients, sometimes there may be over twice as much of the nutrients. Sometimes you only lose a little bit, but the fact of the matter is, under vacuum blending, you're always generally gonna have more of certain phytonutrients, phytochemicals, and especially any kind of antioxidants that can be harmed uh, by oxidative damage. Of course, something like minerals or something, they're probably gonna be minimally affected under black vacuum blending, in my opinion, because they don't like just oxidize. But the phytochemicals are the most important components of the food. So for example, there's things called isothiocyanates in things like kale collard greens, cauliflower, broccoli, right? These are the anti-cancer properties of these foods. And if you blend them, maybe you lose a lot more of those guys, uh, you know, just in their standard blender, but you keep a lot more when vacuum blending. So especially for people that are sick, have a disease, trying to get better, you know, or even just people that want to be in the tip top health and get the most of these phytonutrients, vacuum blending would probably be a really good thing to do. Anyways, 
they've got all the data, they've got all the research here, and this is just the data on the nutrients, but then look at the color differences, right? Uh, under uh, standard blending, you get a lot of separation there, that's on this side, and then under um, the vacuum blending here, look at this. Nice, consistent quality, no air bubbles, no separation. And over here as well, you know, a similar thing being blended up and under vacuum blending, you know, it's a consistent quality and under not in vacuum blending, lots of air particles and whatnot. So yeah, super cool, this vacuum blending technology. Next, I wanna go ahead and show you guys a close-up on the Testcom vacuum blender. So now I wanna show you guys actually how that Testcom vacuum blender works, and it really isn't too difficult. I really like that it's a nice stainless steel, has a really nice look to it, and more importantly than how it looks is what's under the hood, right? How is this uh, working? And so the thing about this blender, unlike others that you'll probably see later on, is that this is a DC-powered motor. Uh, DC powder motors do not, do not lose their torque under load, so I do like that a lot. And uh, once again, this is made in Japan, so super high quality. Basically how this works, it basically has the blender here with the motor underneath, and then up in this sidebar, um, there's like a little vacuum tube, right? And I've, you guys probably can't see that under there, but it basically comes down in this suction cup that basically suctions out or suctions off or vacuums out all the air inside the carafe uh, through this special valve they designed here. Wow, and it's actually kind of cool because it's actually uh, uh, flat here. And if we just go ahead and uh, look at the rest of the blender craft there, I mean, basically they have a specially designed blade, a blade like I've seen no other place. It's not like symmetrical, it's almost like asymmetrical. So it's like all these different shapes with like lots of different blade area. I like this a lot, it looks like a really efficient blade design. On the bottom here, it's basically a plastic bottom with a, um, a metal here, a metal gear on the bottom, which actually goes in uh, to a plastic gear here. Now, you know, the Japanese, once again, they're very smart. They've done a lot of research and they don't want any heat transfer from the motor uh, to the carafe because that will raise up the temperature of whatever you're blending and potentially, uh, you know, you're gonna lose more nu nutrients. So they don't have a metal on metal contact for that reason is how it was explained to me. Anyway, so how this works is you're gonna go ahead and put this blender carafe on, it locks in place. So I like that you're gonna put this top down and you're just gonna go ahead and hit the vacuum fresh button. And as you guys can hear, we got a vacuum running. Now, you know, a lot of vacuum blenders may also have a vacuum in the running, but as a Testcom blender is running, actually it's doing a few things. There's a feedback system, right? This blender is smart. There's computer controls built in that's actually sensing the amount of vacuum in there to get to the perfect level, you right, that they've optimized and discovered works the best. Once it gets to that level, then it's then and only then is it ready to blend. So this is going to run a little bit of time. Now the cool, see that beeps at you. Oh, and then it starts to blend. 100% automatic, right? And it's doing something smart. It's pulsing it a little bit to suck the thing, suck everything into the blender before it starts running at a higher speed. It's a 40 second blend cycle. What I started on is cutting down to like a 23, 22. I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, hit cancel here to stop it so I could talk to you guys a little bit more. But basically now that it's under vacuum, um, it's blending with uh, less oxidative damage. Uh, once you're done, then you can press the unlock button and it's going to automatically suck out all the air for you so that you don't have to. This is a feature that is actually on no other vacuum blender that I know of. And then basically just to pull this off and you could pour out your delicious smoothie. Oh, and the other thing I want to mention is uh, if it does for some reason lose vacuum, like the top isn't on properly, right? It's going to air, it's going to beep at you and it's not going to let you to blend, not going to allow you to actually blend uh, until you have a proper vacuum seal. And even if during its blending, if it determines that it doesn't have a, a, a proper vacuum, it's gonna stop blending whatsoever. So yeah, I mean, this is probably one of the most uh, ten technologically advanced vacuum blenders I've seen because they have been making them for such a long time. They've gone through the trials and tribulations of production and they see what the customer wants, what they don't want, and more importantly, just like they do in Japan a lot, uh, the theory of a Kaizen, of a constant and never-ending improvement. And so uh, this is their, final, their unit right now, third generation. They're gonna be coming out with a fourth really soon. And I do hope that these are end up being imported into the United States. If they do end up here in the U.S., they'll be sold probably like uh, end of the year uh, 2016. So the next exhibitor I want to show you guys is probably my favorite one at this whole event for like a really true, new, and innovative product that is unlike anything else I've ever seen in my life. And it, what it is, it's actually called the Nutra Milk by Bruista. And what this device allows you to do, it allows you to make nut milk quickly and easily without any kind of nut milk bags without a blender or anything. 
In addition, it also allows you to make your guys' own nut butters out of any kind of nut at home and it's been designed specifically to do that. So let me go ahead and show you guys actually how this Nutri-Milk machine works. So now I wanna show you guys actually how the Nutri-Milk machine works. Super simple, super easy, even a, a supervised child could do this. It's really that simple. So, you know, they have a little bit different process than how you would make most nut milks. Most nut milks, you would take your almonds or your nuts, you'd maybe soak them overnight, and then actually you would drain off the soak water. This does a few things, removes things like enzyme inhibitors and other things in the skin, but it also makes it a lot softer. Then you're gonna add that mixture to like, say the blender with some more water, and then blend that up into the mixture, and then you're gonna go ahead and pour that mixture through a nut milk bag that you gotta like wring out like you're milking a cow and it gets wet everywhere, and then you gotta clean this nut milk bag which is really a pain in the you know what right I don't like doing that whatsoever but with this machine no longer do you have to soak your nuts no longer you have to play around with the nut milk bag right all you need to do is you need to have the nuts you need to have the water and then you need to have this machine because it does everything for you and I'm gonna show you guys how right so the first step is you're gonna take your nuts so we're using about uh, two cups of nuts here, you can use any kind of nut, whatever nut you want. You could use almonds, cashews, pecans, use sesame seeds if you wanted, macadamia nuts. They've even tried rice in here. All different kinds of things you could now turn into a milk. So uh, number one, we're gonna go ahead and take the nuts and just pour it into the machine here. Super simple, super easy, no soaking whatsoever. And uh, this machine, basically what it looks like to me, it looks like a very specialized food processor. So this has a similar, you know, S style blade in a food processor that's been specifically designed to only grind up nuts and turn them into a nut butter. It also has this wiping blade as the S blade is coming around and spinning and hitting the nuts. This uh, wiping blade wipes down the side so that you don't have to, so that it basically all the, all the nuts will get fractioned up into different stages. So first they'll kind of get ground up into like a nut flour, then it'll start to go a little bit more, it'll turn into like a little dough ball. You'll see a dough ball spinning around there. Once it starts hitting up more, it's gonna extract more of that oil content, what we like so much, and then it's gonna turn into the butter. You know, and depending on the nuts you use, it may be as short as five minutes or may take 10, maybe 12 minutes, depending on the nut, you know. Something like almonds are gonna take longer, maybe 10 minutes. Whereas something like creamy, like macadamia nuts, maybe those will be done in only just five minutes. And so, uh, so once you got the nuts in there, uh, it turns it into the butter, and then after it's in the butter stage, right, then you add the water, and then it mixes the water with the butter, and then filters out these special grids, these screens that will do all the screening out for you, and then you hit it on the dispense mode, where it actually will dispense all your nut milk out the front through some centrifugal action force through the blade spinning around, and boom, you're done. Then you only have to clean this little uh, food processor-like device. Super simple, super easy. Just wash it under the sink and you're done. All right, so let's go ahead and demonstrate. So we put the nuts in there. We got the lid on, make sure you got the lid on. And then we're gonna hit, hit the butter mode. So we're making a nut butter first. That's the first stage in making the nut milk or just the only stage if you wanna make your own nut butters at home. I've tested a lot of machines making nut butters at home and this by far is probably one of the best ones I've ever found to do nut, nut butters. So it comes as a default as five minutes. You know, I'll probably crank it up to seven. That's probably we'll need, but here's the thing. If you don't need seven, it'll run for seven minutes. It'll count down from seven minutes to zero, but you might not need seven. So you could always stop this a little bit earlier if you don't want to wait the full seven minutes. So once we got it set up, we're just going to go ahead and hit down this uh, start button here. And this, this uh, S blade is going to come and uh, start grinding up the nuts. So I'm going to go ahead and do a close up for you guys to show you guys some of the different stages uh, once I hit go. All right, there we go. All right, so there you guys see, we've been running maybe like, uh, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds. The nuts are literally ground up into like a flower. Uh, there, you can see the, the, you know, the, the side um, arms coming down. That's actually wiping the sides down to keep all the stuff in the blade. So it's uh, grinding up. Oh, and you can see the bottom, look at that. You see the difference between the top there, which is still uh, solid and the bottom, it's kind of turning into that butter that we want. So uh, this is a different stage and we'll go ahead and give you guys a close up on the top there. It's folding under and it's almost starting the dough stage, like the dough ball stage. You can see like now we have solid butter on the top there. It's no longer just like little pieces. And on the bottom, we've really got like, like some of that butter. These wiping blades are really coming in handy now to uh, help wipe down the sides to keep everything 
uh, going into the blades. All right, as you guys can see, we're getting almost to the dough ball stage here. We're getting some condensation in the um, inside the unit. But as you guys can see, it's like folding over really nice. And uh, pretty soon it's going to pretty much mound up into a little ball and spin around. You know, so several minutes have elapsed at this point and we're going to have to let it go a few more. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but now we're kind of to the dough ball stage where there's like a little ball that's like spinning around in there. You see the little ball? All right, there it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. It goes really fast inside there. So now we just got to process a few more minutes and then we're going to have that nice uh, butter consistency that we're looking for. All right, so I apologize having some mic problems, so we're having to do a voiceover so they will not sync up. So I apologize, but we'll try to explain to you guys what is happening here. So the machine ran another minute or two, and now we have a nice almond butter out of the almonds that I just put in. You know, this is unlike any other nut milk maker. Normally the nut milk maker basically just grinds up the almonds at the same time, basically puts it in a water, and then basically filters it out. And you know, that's kind of what you would do in a blender. You would blend up the almonds with the water and then use a cheesecloth or, you know, a strainer to filter it out. Anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to add water. So we're now adding about six cups of filtered water. And the cool thing is, is you could, you know, use any kind of water. You could use coconut water to make an amazing nut milk. You could add other different kinds of liquid, some alkaline water or some hydrogen water in there, right? When you make your own nut milks, you get to choose the kinds of nuts, whether you want to use almonds, hazelnuts, cashews, and also choose the water. So that's really cool. And also you could put other, you know, flavorings and things in this machine at the same time. So uh, once we got all the water in there, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and hit the mix button. And what the mix button will do, it's going to basically mix up the water and the nut butter um, simply and easily. And the cool thing is there's built in uh, sieve inside this machine. So there's an inner basket that you guys could see here. The bottom has the nut butter, uh, which is the, you know, the dark part. And then the top, the white is pretty much the water. And uh, if we hit this, the button here, what's going to happen is the machine is going to mix the water and the nut butter together and we're going to go ahead and hit the start here and after we hit the start button you guys can see it's mixing on the inside and what's happening is slowly but surely on the outside the outside part of this uh, two-part container is now filling up very slowly it's rising up that is the nut milk that is being created that is coming out of the sieve so that you literally don't have to use a nut milk bag so this is really cool it's mixing it up and uh, giving you guys some nice delicious nut milk. So once that's done mixing and you guys can see it's fully mixed, now we're going to press the dispense button. The dispense button basically allows the machine uh, to run properly so that now all the mixture inside can be dispensed by this little handy spigot. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, we turn the spigot on and as you guys can see all the delicious nut milk is rushing out. And this is going to make about 48 ounces of nut milk um, with literally just a uh, two cups of nuts which is really not that much i really like this machine because no longer do you have to clean that nut milk bag that's notorious for being uh, very difficult to clean so now the moment i've been waiting for we get to try out this nut milk that is basically made from nut butter i've never had a uh, nut milk made like this before normally i just you know soak the almonds blend them and then strain them out so this should be a lot more rich and creamy a look at it as it pours out it's a lot more it's a lot more thicker than just simply some nuts bathed in water to leave the nut milk that's already been broken down so it absorbed all the essential fats and nutrients and look at that you know it's a lot thicker than just the water so that's the uh, some of the delicious uh, fat content in there so let's go ahead and try it mmm that is quite delicious some of the best nut milk I've ever had and I really like the flexibility of this machine because it allows you to make the kinds of nut milks with the flavoring agents sweeteners that you want to make to make sure there are no additives uh, in your nut milks. So uh, this product will be available soon at Discount Juicers, probably within the next 30 days we hope to be selling this. So be sure to subscribe to the videos uh, down below and uh, be notified when this Nutramilk nut milk machine is available. So now I want to share with you guys some of the new products at TriBest that makes healthy living easy and they're definitely doing it with some of the products that are unique to the market that literally no other company has because some of these products they've actually developed from day one from the ground up to bring you guys. 
All right, so the first off is the Green Star Pro. This is basically the upgraded model of the Green Star Elite, the, you know, the number one top selling twin gear juicer in the world. And uh, why this one is different than the Elite, basically this is a commercial model, so this is a professional version. So if you have a juice bar, a cafe, or a restaurant, or whatever, this is the one you will need to use. It has commercial electric certification and it is currently uh, soon to be um, commercially uh, sanitation approved. And so that's still under review, but the main difference, and of course, oh, the other thing besides using it commercially, you could also, of course, use this in your home. So it's a commercial quality machine for use in your home for people that really want to juice a lot. It has upgraded wiring over the additional, uh, over the previous Elite model. But the main difference that's really important to me are these guys right here. Uh, these are the twin gears. This is the parts that actually drive, that make this juicer extract the juice. And on the previous version, it was actually uh, stainless steel and plastic. With the new Pro model, it's all 100% stainless steel. So much more high quality piece. In addition, it also includes a little tamper holder here at the back, so you have uh, easy access to be juicing. And the other major thing that's important to me actually is the warranty. So the warranty on the Elite model is 12 years for you know a home user, and for the Pro model, it's now 15 years. So you get three additional years on the warranty, so there's no need to buy any kind of extended warranty. If you're buying the Pro, you're getting the longest warranty in the juicing industry. And Tribest has been in business for over 25 years, and they're here to back up their machines. So I really like that a lot. Now, if you are using it for commercial use, the warranty is going to be a lot shorter. You know, I think it's like maybe uh, two years for commercial use, which is still twice as long as most other commercial juicers that normally provide maybe a one-year warranty. So if you're looking for the Twin Gear Juicer, the Green Star Pro is the one I would recommend for you guys. All right, so the next product I want to show you guys now is the Tribest Raw Tea Kettle. And this might look like a standard teapot tea kettle that you may, may have seen before, but this one's a little bit different. This one has different adjustable temperatures so you could precisely control how hot your tea gets, right? One of the things I hated in the past about drinking tea is that you'd have a tea and you literally would burn your mouth and then you couldn't taste anything for the rest of the day, right? With the Tribest Raw Tea Kettle, that'll never happen for you guys because you have D distinct temperatures you could set this. So for example, if you're making a coffee, you could have it at 195 degrees. If you're doing a black tea, you could have it at 175 degrees. If you're doing a green tea, you could do it at 160 degrees. But more importantly for me, so I don't burn my tongue, they have a raw mode where you actually could brew it at 115 degrees. So in this way, you know, it's basically just lukewarm. You could stick your finger in there. You're not going to burn your finger, you know, to heat up your water. You could put your tea leaves in there. Uh, you could even put just er fresh herbs and things from your garden, you know. If you want to put like sliced lemons in there or sliced cucumbers, then heat it up to 115 on a cold winter day, right? That'll be a nice refreshing, you know, cucumber, lemon water. That's just a little bit warm for you guys. That's going to preserve the enzymes, preserve more nutrients for you guys. The other way my girlfriend actually likes to use this machine is she likes to make a raw hot chocolate. She'll blend some ingredients in the blender. She'll put it in here. She'll hit the raw mode, have it heat up to 115 degrees. So she's, you know, preserving the most nutrients. She's also not going to burn her tongue. And she like, I swear to God, she drinks that like every day. I'm trying to get her actually drinking more green juices instead of more hot chocolate. But hey, if she's drinking raw hot chocolate made in the uh, Tribest raw tea kettle, that's definitely healthier than probably most other things she'd be drinking. Now, the other thing I like about the raw tea kettle is, you know, this just comes off really easy. And while this might look like plastic, you'd be right, it is. But this is plastic on the outside. But when you open this guy up on the inside, it's 100% glass. So your food will never touch the plastic. But I, I like the plastic is on the outside because it gives like a little protection layer. So they got a glass and then a vacuum on the vacuum seal on the inside, plastic on the outside, so that even if it is even if this is 195 degrees, you can put your hand on it and you're not going to burn your hand like many other uh, you know tea kettles, teapots out there. So yeah, uh, this is now available at discountjuicers.com. Really affordable. I've been using it in my home for several months now. I could definitely recommend it and be sure to stay tuned for an upcoming episode where I go more in depth on the raw tea kettle. And this is the Tribest personal blender, but this is their all glass model. 
And I know there's a lot of you guys that don't want any plastic contact with your food. And this is the one blender that will solve all your problems in a small personal format. Now you could blend in a personal size blender. This is just a nice and small and handy. And this is a 100% glass container that no other manufacturer has. Only Trivest has made this from scratch because they saw a need for you know people blending without plastic. So not only is the top glass, but if we spin off this bottom piece, you can see this blade assembly, right? This blade assembly underneath here, it's all stainless steel and a silicone ring here. So your food will never ever touch plastic. So I like that they have like a nice larger 24 ounce carafe, a smaller 16 ounce carafe, and an eight ounce carafe. All these are included in one package deal when you buy the Tribest glass personal blender. So you could be blending without any plastic. I think the next product I wanna show you guys actually is the, uh, the Tribest Suvant. So another product that makes healthy living easy that was introduced last year and is now available at discountjuicers.com is the Tribest Suvant. And the Suvant is a sous vide machine that allows you to gently heat your food for long periods of time. So it's kind of like a slow cooker on steroids, right? This is even a better way to slow cook because in a slow cooker, you have to have some kind of liquid medium that carries your food in there. With this, you could actually keep your food 100% dry because what it is, it's basically a water bath cooking method from France. That's why it's sous vide. <laughs> and what it is, is they got a, basically a water chamber. I think it holds like three gallons of water and then they have a circulating pump that circulates the water so you get nice and even circulation of the uh, water set to the desired temperature. So the, this one's set to 118 degrees, so this is the temperature you would want if you're into raw food so you don't damage some of those delicate uh, enzymes, but more importantly, you preserve more of those beneficial phytonutrients. And unlike when you boil or steam foods, right, some of the nutrients get displaced into the water. In this case, what you're doing is you're vacuum sealing the food in there, taking out all the air so you're not getting that oxidation during the uh, heating or the cooking process. And then you put it in there so it gently heats this up, retaining all the nutrients inside the bag instead of getting it out into the water. And uh, basically what this does, it makes the foods uh, a nice softer texture. So whether you're doing that at a, at a more hotter temperature, this machine goes up to 194 degrees at its max end, and you could do things like meats and eggs and things at the higher end but I would prefer to do the vegetables on the lower end. This machine goes uh, as low as 95 degrees. They have it set for 118 degrees, and I would like to try to you know, always have the temperature as warm as possible so you could uh, minimize the time. But basically what you'll find is once you put this, uh, the food in the sous vide, here they have like uh, basically some uh, herbs and spices, some uh, olive oil and mushrooms, eggplant and zucchini, just kind of going in there, you can kind of see it. Basically the texture just gets really, really soft. So this is the green bean. So you could now get textures in raw foods if you want to preserve more nutrients in the food that you couldn't normally get otherwise. So that's why I really like the Tribest Suvant unit that allows you to do this. And stay tuned and click subscribe below. I'll have an upcoming episode on this where I'm actually going to demo it and uh, you know process and um, gently heat some of the food out of my garden, zucchinis and uh, carrots and whatnot in this machine versus having them raw and you'll definitely see the texture difference. So yeah, I definitely like this machine. It has a uh, two-year warranty. And yeah, I look forward to using it a little bit more. And I think it could definitely help you guys preserve more nutrients in your food while making a softer food texture and providing you guys more flexibility. This is the all-new Tribest DynaBlend Pro Blender. So this blender is unlike any other on the market. I mean, you might think, oh, John, that kind of looks like that new style Vitamix with the, with the larger, shorter carafe. Well, yeah, I mean, the craft definitely reminds me of the Vitamix, right? But beyond that, this even goes above and beyond what the Vitamix can do. Not only is this two and a half horsepower, not only does this have like a manual or automatic controls with you know the variable speed, it has a countdown timer so the blender will turn off automatically so that you don't have to babysit your blender. It also has three different pre-programmed cycles to a blend, pulse, and do a combo mode to help suck things in to the blender while blending. It also has like these little uh, LEDs that light up minimum to maximum as you control it automatically. But the thing about this blender that makes it different than any other are two things. Number one, you have a raw food temperature indicator. This is the first of this of indicator of this kind on any blender that I've ever seen. So, oh, let me go ahead and turn this around for you guys. Oh yeah, it's right here. So 
I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a little um, uh, blue little like star on the bottom of the blender craft, right? This blue star will basically change the white if the temperature exceeds 118 degrees. So this ensures you can keep your blended mixtures raw. So that's kind of cool for people that are into raw foods or that want to keep the temperatures lower in the food they're processing to maintain and achieve the highest level of nutrition. Now the other thing that makes this truly unique is that this is a vacuum blender. This vacuum blender allows you to suck out you know, uh, some of the air inside the carafe so that there's less air when blending so you oxidize your food significantly less. And here's an example. Uh, you know, this was made with a standard blender here. This is just some apples. And as you guys can see, there's a lots of air bubbles in there. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. And the color is kind of like dark and oxidized. Like, who wants to drink that? Meanwhile, on the vacuum blended apples here, you can see there's like virtually no air bubbles inside the mixture. It's also a nice, more vibrant color, right? Which one of these drinks would you guys prefer to drink? Something that looks all like brown, oxidized, like poop, <laughs> right? This is what your Vitamix is doing to your food. It's oxidizing it massively. Or something, you know, like this. It looks really bright colored, you know, like a nice shiny, bright, sunny day where you're hanging out on the beach. And this is what the Dynapro blender does. I mean, that's really the power of the vacuum blending technology built into this machine along with all the power you need to do all those tough blending jobs in the kitchen. The other thing I want to say and the reason why the vacuum blending works is, you know, uh, besides when you're blending, you're oxidizing the food massively because of that little vortex inside the blender. What many people don't realize in the Vitamix specifically or any other non-vacuum blender including Blendtec, um, when you're blending, you're adding oxygen to your mixture. So for example, you could do this at home if you guys have a Vitamix or whatever, right? Fill up your craft to like four cups, whatever you're gonna blend up, your green smoothie, fill it up to four cups, right? Crank it on high, you know, put it on high for like a minute or two, however long you usually blend your smoothie. When you're done blending, you turn the blender off, now you've increased the volume of the food in there. It's not now four cups, it's now four and a half cups. And you're like, wow, the Vitamix is magic. It automatically made an extra half a cup of food for me to eat. No, 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 I'm sorry, that's not how it works, guys. How it works is the Vitamix basically is aerating it so much that it adds an extra half a cup of air to the mixture you're blending. And that's really bad news because those are all the air bubbles in the blended mixture. And besides potentially giving you gas, bloating, and all this kind of stuff when you drink the mixture, there's also tons of little air bubbles in the blended mixture. So as it sits there, each air bubble is oxygen. As they dissipate or pop, they're basically oxidizing the nutrients in the mixture that you just made. So that's really terrible and that's why one of the reasons why this looks so dark and this looks so light. So I want you guys to think about that, right? In my opinion, the vacuum blending technology is going to change the whole blending industry and if you still got a non-vacuum blender and especially if you're into this for your health, right? If you're blending margaritas, it probably doesn't matter if you're blending them in a non-vacuum blender. But if you're blending delicate things like kale, like leafy green vegetables, like sprouts, like microgreens, like blueberries, right? You want to make sure that you're going to maximize the amount of nutrition in the food you're going to be consuming because that's why you're eating the food, right? Why eat blueberries if they're not so good for you and they could prevent and help with, you know, disease, some of the, you know, uh, reverse the aging process in our bodies. So that's why I like the uh, Tribest DynaBlend. This will be the first, uh, you know, vacuum blender available in the U.S. You know, and this is a commercially rated. You know, it has commercial electric certification and is currently going through the process uh, to get the uh, commercial sanitation approval. When it is on its initial release, it'll be released as a household model without all the approvals. So I think especially for restaurants and juice bars, you know, that are making smoothies, they must be using the vacuum blender. This will, uh, you know, uh, make their smoothies and uh, items they make better because they're gonna be preserving more nutrients. Now let's talk about more than just nutrients. If you guys are a chef, you went to chef school and have one of those chef degrees or whatever you guys do, master chef, whatever they call them, right? The reason why they like the vacuum blender is because the vacuum blender preserves more of the taste and the flavors of the food, right? Taste and flavors in the food, when we're tasting the flavors, we're tasting the nutrition in the food and when you blend it under high speed, right, we're oxidizing 
the nutrients, which means you're going to be lower in the flavors. So, you know, likewise, if you drank this, it would, probably wouldn't taste too good. If you drank this, it would taste a lot sweeter, much more better for you. And so that's another reason why chefs like this. So, I mean, all over the place, the vacuum blending technology, in my opinion, is definitely a good thing. So now what I thought I'd do is actually show you guys a functional use of some of the products that I just showed you guys. And I mean, these are products that I use in my everyday life at home. Uh, maybe I'll be using the Dyna Pro more once I get one actually. So I'm glad I could use it today and show you guys actually what I'm gonna be eating for dinner. Um, today for dinner, you know, many people travel and they're not able to eat healthy and that's a big problem. I bring produce with me. So, you know, these cucumbers came with me from the West Coast all the way out here to Chicago only to be eaten here, right? And I've also stopped at local stores, locally, Stanley's. I got these uh, uh, bell peppers here. Um, but uh, so I always shop locally and when, whenever I can when I'm in different areas. But also it's very important to have high quality travel food. So before I get on the airplane tonight, before I go through the TSA, I'm making my dinner right now. Normally I don't recommend like making your food in advance and especially if you're blending it because this is gonna happen, right? If I blended stuff now, by the time I eat it for dinner, it's looking like this instead of like this. But now through the power of the Dyna Blend, I'm able to maximize the nutrition and keep, you know, most of the phytonutrients and phytochemicals compared to losing them. And so I'm gonna use the uh, Green Star Pro here to first make a juice and we're gonna go ahead and juice some uh, bell peppers we're gonna juice some cucumbers and we're gonna juice some del cabo organic cherry tomatoes to make a nice rich juice or a soup base I'm gonna then take that soup base uh, from the Green Star Pro that runs at a low rpm so it's maximizing the nutrients and based on the testing I've seen it pulls out the most nutrients from the juice it's making we're gonna go ahead and take that and then put it into the Dyna Pro blender Normally I might put half of the mixture in a normal blender knowing that the half of the mixture that I'm going to be blending up, I'm going to be losing a lot of those phytonutrients that I just created in the juicer. And then I will actually add the other half in later. This is with a normal blender. And that's because, you know, in a normal blender, you're going to get this. In the Dyna Pro, I'm going to put all the juice in there and we're going to get this. We're going to keep all the phytonutrients. And the reason why I'm putting it in the Dyna Pro instead of just taking a juice to go is because I want to I want to kind of make it more hearty, more thick, more delicious. So I'm making a raw soup using the juicer and the Dyna Pro. So to make that soup, we want to have a nice creamy consistency. So what we're going to blend into it, we're going to go ahead and blend in some avocados and a little bit of walnuts. Now the cool thing is when you blend in uh, you know fats like avocados or nuts under the vacuum it kind of makes it more fluffy kind of like maybe like a whipped cream you know so that's kind of cool so it's gonna make a lot more fluffy so you may need to add a little bit more liquid than you normally would uh, the other thing I'm gonna add of course besides that are some high antioxidant rich foods including some curry powder for the anti-inflammatory effect as well as the uh, antioxidants in the curry and also some pepper so I get uh, you know uh, higher levels of uptake from the turmeric in there now a soup would not be a soup without your greens I always encourage you guys to eat your greens and with the Tribest products they make eating more greens easy if I was at home at my garden I would just simply juice some of my greens from my garden through the juicer because I have li literally unlimited greens this time of year all for free I don't have to buy them and they're of the highest quality unfortunately when I travel I'm like a lot of you guys that actually don't have gardens I gotta buy my produce and it gets quite expensive trying to eat a good quantity of greens so what I got today we got from a Trader Joe's some organic spinach and this organic spinach was like, I don't know, two, three bucks, depending on where you live. It's six ounces of greens, which is not a lot. My goal every day is eat two pounds of greens. Normally I maybe hit one pound easily. Today is gonna be a bit less, but when I get back home tomorrow, I'll be having some green juices. Uh, but anyways, I could take these greens and I could juice them. And six ounces of greens will maybe make, if you're lucky, one third of a cup of juice, of green juice, which is not a lot. So you're literally wasting a lot of the money by putting it through the juicer because you're getting some of the uh, nutrients out of the spinach and some of the soluble fiber but you're losing all the insoluble fiber and the other nutrients that are actually coming with it so because i have the vacuum blender now i'm able to put the greens into the vacuum blender and vacuum blend it and to preserve the most nutrients and keep all the soluble and insoluble fiber more importantly uh, in my soup that i'm making and once again, you could do this in a standard blender, but once again, if you did it in a standard blender, it's gonna look like this, and in the vacuum blender, it's gonna look like this. So I really can't wait to use this, these two in combo 
because this is what I would normally do at home, but I've never done this in a vacuum liner before. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and juice up the uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, and peppers for you in the Green Star Pro. All right, let's go ahead and turn this baby on. So uh, when juicing the Green Star Pro, very important, you wanna rotate the different items you're putting in. So we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of peppers in. Maybe we're gonna start off actually with a few tomatoes because they're the softest item. Put a couple of those in, then we're gonna put some pieces of peppers in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a cucumber in there. And we're gonna go ahead and push it in with the uh, wooden pusher here. I really like how this runs at a low speed to maximize the most nutrients and to get a really good uh, extraction. As you guys can see instantly now, we got some of that juice coming out. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just juice all this stuff up and we're gonna come back at you when I'm ready to blend. All right, so I'm just about done juicing some of the peppers, cucumbers, and tomatoes in here and I've made like I think pretty much like a liter of juice or so approximately we're gonna go ahead and shut this baby off this has worked amazingly now the thing I want to say if you're juicing something with soft consistencies like the peppers like cucumbers and like tomatoes like I did you got to really pay attention to this little outlet knob right you can't just crank it in all the way like you would on carrots or celery you know it was cranked all the way in and then it was kind of backing up on me so then I just carefully loosened this just a little bit to start letting this pulp out. And the amazing thing about the Green Star Pro, you know, at Discount Juicers, it's the number one machine that'll get the driest pulp on all vegetables and leafy greens. So here's the pulp from the uh, peppers here. We can literally pick this stuff up and it's pretty dry. I mean, I'm squeezing it through my fingers before any juice comes out of it. This is quite impressive. Normally I juice my peppers in a vertical juicer and the pulp is actually still wet, not so with the Green Star Pro. One of the major benefits of it is getting the highest yield. So now I'm on the next stage of the recipe. We're gonna go ahead and take the juice we made in the Green Star Pro, preserving the most nutrients at the, at the slowest speed and actually getting the most yield. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the vacuum blender. So dump it in there. Nice, delicious juice, unlike a high-speed juicer, you know, like a centrifugal ejection, like the inexpensive ones you might find at the department store that'll aerate the juice. Once again, that's like the high-speed blender that aerates and oxidizes uh, the nutrients in the blender. Um, this guy preserves the most nutrients, so why would you want to put this then into a uh, blender that then is going to oxidize the nutrients? So I'm glad I got the vacuum blender that's going to preserve them. So uh, once we got the mixture in there, now we're gonna add some of the extra accoutrements. And so we got some of the avocado we're gonna go ahead and put in there. We're gonna go ahead and uh, you know, uh, squeeze in some of the pepper. Then we're gonna go ahead and put in some of that curry powder here. Then we're gonna go ahead and of course put in the spinach, right? I really wanna encourage you guys to maximize your green consumption. Normally I prefer to juice my greens if I have a lot, but if I have a little, then I prefer to blend them. And I know a lot of you guys don't have unlimited greens like I'm able to produce in my garden. And I wanna encourage you guys to check out my other YouTube channel, Growing Your Greens. I teach you guys how you guys can grow your own greens so you don't have to buy greens again. They're some of the easiest things to ever grow. So literally we're cranking in all six ounces of this uh, baby spinach in here. And if you, do guys, if you guys do gotta buy your greens, I do encourage you guys to visit a warehouse club store. Uh, Sam's Club, Costco, I like Costco personally. Uh, that's the cheapest place to buy the greens and I would encourage you guys to get like the power greens mix. They're less expensive than buying the spinach or spring mix. All right, so I think uh, lastly, we gotta go ahead and uh, add some of these uh, walnuts in here. Now I'm not gonna put a ton of walnuts because I got all the avocado so far, but maybe like maybe uh, about a half a handful is uh, good enough. So now that we got everything added to the blender, the next step, and this is very important on any blender, but especially a vacuum blender that's gonna be blending under vacuum is you need to make sure that all the, all the things you're gonna be blending is actually underneath the water line and as close as the blade as possible because you will not be able to stick a tamper in as you're blending, very critical. So we got the uh, stainless steel scoop here that can be used as a little pusher. Once again, this is while the blender is off. We're basically just gonna push all this mixture down as far as we can in the blade so the blender will have the easiest time of blending it up so we can also minimize the actual blending time. So now that you guys can see we got uh, you know pretty much all this underneath. That's gonna be definitely better for the uh, vacuum blender. Make sure we get all this stuff off the side walls as well. All right. Next we put the top on. And make sure this fully seats down, very important. And the final step is we need to vacuum it out. 
So we got a little vacuum pump here that comes with the machine. We put it on the top here. And uh, you know, this is a pretty much a manual operation. You're gonna manually vacuum it, and I'm gonna put the mic next to the pump so you guys could hear the sound difference. So that's when you know you're done vacuuming because there's gonna be a sound difference uh, change. So let's go ahead and uh, vacuum it out. So what we're doing now is actually we're vacuuming out uh, a good portion of the air inside to decrease the volume of air inside the chamber to uh, prevent you know, some of the massive oxidation that occurs. All right, so uh, listen carefully. And if you guys look on here, you'll see like in the mixture, some of the bubbles are actually bubbling out as it sucks all the air out of this portion and even some of the air um, out from the liquid. So now that you guys hear it kind of like struggling and it's not a high pitch anymore, it's kind of like low pitch, like that means pretty much all the vacuum has been sucked out. So now we're ready for the next step to basically take the vacuum uh, off. And now we're ready to blend. So blending in the Dynapro, super simple, super easy. And all we need to do is we're gonna hit the blend button, which is the automatic function. We're gonna hit it twice. Starts right up. And we stopped it. I think uh, it only needed to blend about 30 seconds to get a nice consistent mixture. And the amazing thing is, is that if we look in here, it's a really nice consistent color with no air bubbles inside there, right? And so the other thing I wanna encourage you guys to do once you're done is you need to let the vacuum off the container before you just try to lift the top off. Cause you try to lift the top off, the, because there's vacuum in there, the top is being sucked in. So it's really hard to pop off. And then even if you do get it off, you're like, oh, I was strong, I popped it off your smoothie is going to probably explode everywhere. So listen to this. On the top here, there's a little button, right? And on this little uh, button, you're going, to, you're going to pull it up. So I'll put it near the mic so you can hear it. Wow, that's the sound of freshness occurring, blending in our vacuum. So you have a nice, uh, delicious, creamy mixture, especially when adding some of the things like the nuts and the avocados. Wow, that's impressive. This is the first time I've truly blended one of the mixtures that I almost do every night in a vacuum blender. And man, this consistency is amazing. It's nice and uh, consistent. Um, yeah, it's like really like a, like a creamy texture. So what I'm gonna do now, let's see here. I gotta grab my bottle. So I got my bottle I'm gonna take with me on the airplane. We're gonna load this up in here. I'm gonna fill it all the way up to the top, cap it off, and now this could go in the fridge. And uh, when I leave, to go to the airport. This is what I'm taking with me and I'll be drinking it later. Now the cool thing about this is because there's no air bubbles in here. I know you guys have blended things before. You filled up your container and then you come back later and it's like, there, it's not as full as it was. That's because all the air bubbles are bubbling out. This is gonna stay as full as it was because there is no air bubbles in here because we blend it under vacuum. And we're gonna preserve the most nutrition, you know, much like the uh, demonstration here. We'll come back, I'll come back in several hours. This will be the same exact color as it is now it's not gonna change like this one, you know, if it wasn't under vacuum. So this is actually the practical use of how I'm making my dinner and how you guys could use these machines in concert uh, to make some of the highest quality foods in the world. So now I wanna show you guys actually the next exhibitor today and that's actually the legacy companies. The legacy companies, they own Omega, they own Excalibur, they own uh, the Onana's brand, they own a lot of different brands. Anyways, we're gonna cover the uh, new products at Omega and Excalibur right now. So the first new product I wanna show you guys actually at Omega is this guy right here. This is the Omega Compact Horizontal Single R Reducer. CNC80 is the model number. And basically this is just a smaller version of their larger horizontal single auger machines that you may be familiar with. The Omega, best-selling Omega 8006, the NC800, whatnot. Um, this one actually is a little bit different than the 8006. Actually, in some ways it's upgraded, in some ways it's not. It actually has an outlet uh, spout here that's adjustable. So this means you're gonna have a greater tension on the produce. It's gonna get drier before it comes out for you guys. Yeah. Um, the main difference between like uh, this and the 8000 um, seven models is this, okay? We could hold up one, this is the 8007, this is the 8000 8, uh, CNC or the compact. If we look at the housing, it's a significantly shorter 
right, by a couple inches. So basically the auger is a little bit shorter, the housing is a little bit shorter, but basically you should get the same yield. I don't know yet because I haven't tested this, uh, but um, I kind of like the longer auger because I think it'll probably work a bit better, but I'm not really sure. But the cool thing about the compact is the entry level model. So it's the least expensive Omega single auger machine with a nice long warranty. So while Omega is known for its juicers, I mean, they are the name in juicing in my opinion. They make some of the best juicers out there. Uh, they're getting into the blender market once again. So they've totally retooled, redesigned, and they're now coming out with their three horsepower line of uh, Omega blenders here. So I really can't wait to use them. The one thing I wish is that, you know, <laughs> I wish they were vacuum blenders. So hopefully Omega will be coming out with a vacuum blender real soon. So now moving over to the Excalibur side here at Legacy. Um, the Excalibur brand is now coming out with the RES10 and that's the uh, model right here. This is a 10 tray dehydrator and this is a new, different and unique compared to the other models they have introduced in the past. This is a total redesign from their traditional 3900 uh, you know, series. And so I like that this uh, model is 10 trays with a digital controller so you have two time two temperature controls as well as other uh, flexibility due to the computer control of the RES-10 model. It basically will uh, tell you and guide you through all the settings uh, through a full uh, alphanumeric um, display panel. The major thing that I like about this machine is this actually has two sets of fans and two sets of heating elements. So what this means is you could run the top trays with one temperature. Say you're doing beef jerky, right? You can do the top trays at a hot temperature for beef jerky, and you can do the lower trays if you're dehydrating your vegetables at you know 118 degrees or whatnot. So you could have two distinct temperatures, and you could have them in two different zones and two different times. Of course, you could also run the whole machine with the same temperature all the way throughout. So this allows you to have greater flexibility, but also more importantly, allows you guys to save money because if you're only going to be using five trays, why have to heat the whole dehydrator? So this is uh, one of the only dehydrators on the market that actually has this feature. So I'm really looking forward to getting a sample unit and uh, testing it to see how it performs. So the next exhibitor I want to show you guys actually is the Kuvings booth right behind me there. And the main new thing at Kuvings this year is their vacuum blending technology. So this is the first time I'll be able to show this to you guys on this YouTube channel along with all the other vacuum blenders. And you know, every vacuum blender is a little bit different. You know, each one has their pros and cons. The Kuvings vacuum blender actually has some definite pros that I like a lot. So let's actually head over there and show you guys what they are. So now I have the pleasure of introducing you guys to, to the Kuvings vacuum blender model SV500. And uh, that's right here in the picture. I'll be dem demoing it in a second to show you guys really the power of vacuum blending because I knew this is something new that you guys haven't heard of before. But basically under vacuum blending, unlike a regular blender, they basically suck out a higher volume of the air so that now there's less oxidative damage to the food you're blending in. So much so that on this little chart here, I don't know if you guys can see a little bar chart on the bottom, but uh, blending a tomato, for example, there's more vitamin C that you get if you're blending them under vacuum than not, and same thing with an oranges, right? There's a more uh, new vitamin C uh, when you vacuum blend oranges than without them. And I mean, besides just some of the technical data that you, that you could see on the charts here, you could, you could see it like for reals with your eyes. So let me go ahead and give you guys a close up of what they got right here. Uh, this side is actually an ordinary blender. You guys could easily see the separation at the bottom. There's a lot of aeration and bubbles inside the mixture. And then over on this side is the vacuum blender. As you guys can see on the vacuum blended mixture, there's no air bubbles. They got really nice, consistent blend. And uh, so that's really the difference, you know. Removing a portion of the air will preserve more the nutrients, plus you're not gonna get all those air bubbles in there, which uh, tends to actually oxidize your food faster and also may lead to gas and bloating for some people. And so that's really uh, amazing that now they have the technology uh, to do this. So next one I wanna show with you guys is actually the actual Kuvings vacuum blender in actual use and show you guys why vacuum blending makes so much sense to me. So now I wanna show with you guys actually the Kuvings vacuum blender. So the first thing you're gonna notice is actually the, vac the Kuvings vacuum blender actually has its own unique sound enclosure, which is really cool. So this actually goes over the whole machine so it, it could do the vacuum function, but also it's gonna ensure that your blender is more quiet than other blenders that don't have a sound enclosure. Uh, the next thing is that there's no additional kind of uh, vacuum pumps or anything that you'll need to uh, you know, use. 
because basically there's a little hole in the sound enclosure that basically the air gets uh, sucked out through the top here all automatically. So I really like that a lot. Now, the next thing is actually, I wanna show you guys a demonstration of the power of the vacuum technology and why it is so beneficial, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and take off this uh, sound enclosure on both units here. We're gonna go ahead and take off both these blender crafts. Uh, these blender crafts, I think they're about, uh, they hold one liter, about 32 ounces, one quart. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, use basically, uh, you get these extra crafts, which are basically uh, just for uh, putting your food or your smoothies under vacuum. After you're done vacuuming, blending them, you'll put them in here and you'll suck out the vacuum so they're gonna last longer. Say you gotta go to work in the afternoon, right? You're gonna get one with every Kuvings vacuum blender. So for the example of showing you the power of the vacuum blending, we got some uh, marshmallows. Now I don't encourage you guys to eat marshmallows, they're very unhealthy food, but this is gonna be really good because it's gonna give you a demonstration of why vacuum blending technology is so valuable to, to blenders, right? So we're gonna go ahead and uh, set this guy in here. And uh, what we're also gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take some balloons. So these balloons are just uh, inflated a little bit, right? And this is how they are under just normal uh, air pressure, right? They're just like this, they're this big. Same thing with the marshmallows. We're gonna go ahead and put that on the blender here. We're gonna put the sound enclosures on. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the blenders are on and then we're just gonna hit uh, the button. So there's a few different buttons. There's a vacuum only button. So that's like for using it to vacuum out the containers, whether your smoothies in there, whether you're putting strawberries in there, you wanna vacuum them out and store them in your fridge so they're gonna last longer. Then they got an auto vacuum, auto blend feature, which is actually quite cool. This auto vac will actually, an auto blend will basically vacuum it to the appropriate amount and then blend it and sense the motor load on the motor shaft and blend it accordingly until it's done and then shut off so that you don't have to remember any kind of program times or anything like that. So this is truly a smart blender. And then the final step is if you, for some reason you don't want to vacuum, you can just do the blend only function. And in addition, you have a, you know, a little uh, control here that says there's a variable speed dial that you can control the speed. All right, so let's make sure that both these guys are on. So that's on, that's on. So I'm gonna do one first. So we're gonna do the balloons first. We're gonna hit the vacuum only function. So I want you guys carefully to watch these balloons as I hit the vacuum. So look at that carefully. You see what's happening? The balloons are actually getting expanded. They're blowing up more, but they're not really blowing up more. It's because they're pulling out vacuum that some of the air, the volume of air in the chamber is being sucked out. So this actually makes the balloons expand. As you guys can see, the balloons are getting actually quite big and I'm kind of wondering if they're gonna pop inside there because they're really expanding a lot. But basically what this does when you put food in there, it basically expands the food and, and, and uh, breaks, makes it uh, more expanded so that now the, the, the blender could actually get in there and cut the food more efficiently. So that means you're gonna get finer, more consistent blends in a vacuum blender, right? So we can go ahead and take this off now that it's done. And you know, that's amazing. We started with some balloons that may have looked something like this, you know, that were kind of small, but now they're fully expanded. And here's the proof. The proof is in the sound. So listen carefully. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up on this. Let all that vacuum out and look at that. These balloons shrunk back down. So this is not any kind of magic. I'm not David Copperfield. I just got the Kuvings vacuum blender on my side. All right, next I wanna go ahead and show you guys this, uh, the marshmallows here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit the button here just for the vacuum on the mar marshmallows. Watch very carefully. As I hit the button on the marshmallows, these marshmallows are very ever so slightly expanding, much like those balloons, right? And marshmallow is one of the easiest things to do vacuum on. Something like an apple, even though you can't really see it expand, it's expanding a little bit. Carrots probably because they're so dense, not so much, but because there's a lot of airspace in the marshmallows, they expand really well. Something like probably a tomato or a watery fruit like an orange, you know, might be a little bit better. But look at these, these marshmallows are now fully expanded and uh, when you're doing that to your fruits and vegetables, that's just gonna expand the space between the cells so the blender can get in there and be more efficient at cutting. And so now that we're done, we can go ahead and take this off and uh, once again, pull this out for you guys. Look at that, the marshmallows fully expanded. And now I'm gonna pull this in front of your eyes. Watch these guys shrink down. Wow, look at that, man. Totally amazing. These guys shrunk down in almost nothing, like literally half the size of what they were before. And that is the power of the vacuum.
So I mean, these are cool card tricks or you know tricks to show what the vacuum uh, you know function on the vacuum containers could do. But the real benefit is actually blending under vacuum because you're going to preserve more nutrients, some of those beneficial phytonutrients under vacuum because you're re you're removing uh, you know a good percentage of the volume of air in there, which includes the oxygen that does the oxidative damage. So what I want to do next for you guys is actually uh, go ahead and uh, blend up a uh, smoothie here. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, put this carafe in there. And the cool thing about this, there's a built-in safety feature that will not allow the blender to come on unless you actually have the carafe in place. It makes a little beeping noise. I don't know if you guys heard that. But once you got the mixture in there, and today we got uh, pineapples, grapes, a little bit of coconut water, some ice, and some spinach. We're going to go ahead and put this top on. And one of the greatest features of Kuving's uh, vacuum blender is it has this automatic mode, right? So this means you could press this button, you could go and walk your dog and come back and it's going to turn itself off, it's going to do the vacuum and everything. So that's what I'm going to do today because I'm kind of lazy. I'm going to go ahead and press this button on once to turn it blue. That means it's ready to go. Then we're going to go ahead and hit this middle button, which is vacuum and blend. And uh, I'll, I'll kind of stay close to this so you guys can hear the vacuum running. So, you know, this is fully automatic, unlike other machines on the market that you may have to vacuum separately. I like that this is fully built into this, and it also has this uh, really cool, nifty sound enclosure. Now, when vacuuming, you might see like some little air bubbles like come out of the water. You might see like the pineapples expand just ever so slightly, but basically all the excess air is being pulled out. And you know, of course, yes, there'll be some air still left in there because it's not like we're in outer space or something. Uh, but the main challenge with the uh, oxidative damage is occurring because there's an excess of oxygen, and especially when blending, it's literally sucking in oxygen in, that, in, in the uh, vortex. So now that we're under vacuum, it's detected that, and now and only now is it actually blending up into a nice smoothie. As you guys can hear the motor pitch, it's going up, going lower, going up, going lower. That helps to suck things into the blender to make sure you get a really good and consistent blend every time. Once it knows it's blending pretty good, it ramps it up to a really high speed to really fractionate all the cell walls to break open all those nutrients. Now it's pulsing a little bit to make sure that everything's getting fully blended up. And in just a few seconds here, it's going to basically uh, turn itself off and we're gonna be ready to uh, drink this delicious smoothie. So the machine has just auto shut itself off. So the next thing we need to do, we need to take off this sound enclosure so we could access our blended smoothie. And I want you guys to look at that, right? Some of the things you'll see when vacuum blending is number one, there's gonna be very little, if any, air bubbles in the mixture once you're done, right? In a standard Vitamix or something like that, right? You could put four cups of you know items to blend and when you're done blending you now got five and a half cups now is the vitamix magic because it created an extra half a cup of food for you no it actually put probably about a half a cup of extra air into your mixture under vacuum that does not happen this stays pretty much the same level that it was as it went in the other thing you're not seeing a lot of air bubbles in there and that another thing that's very important is you know in a, in a Vitamix at a high speed, you know, there's a lot of splashing and glugging up and stuff hits the roof of the blender craft, so it makes it hard to clean, right? Generally, in a vacuum blender, right, it's gonna be a much more smoother blend because there's not all that extra air in there to bounce out, bounce your food around, right? So uh, once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, on the top of this, we're gonna pull this back and you'll, you could hear that. And basically now we took out all the, uh, the vacuum and now we could go ahead and open this guy up. And look at that nice, really nice, thick consistency there. No air bubbles. We're gonna go ahead and pour that out for you guys, like really close up style. Look at that, man. No air bubbles, really nice and creamy. Like I'm not seeing any chunks. Looks like the Kuvings vacuum blender gets nice, consistent blends, nice, high horsepower. And uh, final thing, I wanna taste it. Oh wow, totally amazing, right? This, we blended some pineapples in there. Guess what I can smell? The pineapples. So the thing with the vacuum blending is when you blend under vacuum, it's gonna keep more of those essential oils, those scents, which are actually defined as nutrients in the mixture you're blending. So for chefs and whatnot, you know, you're gonna get better flavors when you do vacuum blending than when you blend in a Vitamix. You know, the Vitamix destroys a lot of nutrients as well as those volatile compounds, which are the aromas of the food. And because the aromas are more, guess what? It should also taste better as well. So let me go ahead and taste this guy. Mmm. 
Wow, that's one of the smoothest blends I've ever had in my entire life. I'm surprised I can't even detect those little strings of pineapples that I would normally detect in other blenders I've used in the past. Anyways, I'm really looking forward to getting my very own Kubings vacuum blender and I'll have more in-depth testing for you guys in the future. I think the final thing at the Kubings booth I want to share with you guys today is they have a new announcement on some new juicers that are going to be out now. So the other new announcement here at Kubings is that they have a new juicer. Well, not actually a new juicer. It's still their Kubings Whole Slow Juicer Elite C7000. It's the best juicer I've tested with a nice wide three inch feed chute. And up until now, it was only available in silver. Now Kubings has available and it's now available at discountjuicers.com. They got a white model and they got a red model that's now available. So yeah, now if you've been waiting for a Kubings Whole Slow Juicer Elite in a different color than silver, you guys got it. So one of the last exhibitors I wanna share with you guys today is actually, I've saved the best for last and actually, and you know, you, this episode has been about a lot of different vacuum blenders where they're sucking the air out of, you know, uh, blenders to blend. So you're maximizing uh, the food quality or the nutrients and also the taste profiles. Many of you guys know about vacuum sealers or food savers that suck the air out when you store your food so they can actually store for longer. Well, what we're doing here is they got the uh, natural storage systems actually takes the um, sucking out the vacuum to the next level to a MAP or modified atmosphere packaging. This is what when you open a bag of chips or a lot of different foods uh, in the store, they put it under nitrogen flushing and they put they add nitrogen in there to actually exclude the air to make the oxygen percentage lower in the food. The vacuum technology has nothing to do with lowering the percentage of oxygen. It has everything to do with lo lowering the volume of oxygen. So even better than lowering the volume of oxygen, hey, just get the oxygen out of there because it's causing all the oxidative damage. So anyways, let's go head over to the booth of uh, Natural Storage Systems and share with you guys their technology that does it. So aside from me just thinking this thing is cool and I want to show you guys because we will be offering this at discountjuicers.com, guess what? The whole show here, they got, they received the Inventor Recognition Award International Home and Houseware Show 2017. They got an award for this stuff because this is totally revolutionary and if everybody used a system like this, we could cut the food waste down dramatically. Unfortunately, like 40% of the food in America is basically just wasted and it gets thrown away. I mean, how many times have you had that rotten or you know moldy cheese or vegetables that go bad on you, right? And you're buying those expensive organic vegetables that cost a lot and then they go bad, you gotta throw them away, you just lost the money that you were gonna, didn't even get into you because you didn't even get to eat it before it went bad. So this system is even better than vacuum storage systems. It's actually the next level. And how they're doing that is with these special canisters right here. As you guys can see, it says a uh, natural preserve. And I like on here, it says natural, organic, and 100% safe inert gas. And the only ingredient in here is nitrogen, filtered directly from air, no additives or propellants. So that's how they're doing it. They're literally using the nitrogen to displace some of the oxygen in whatever you're storing your foods in to uh, lower the oxygen so that you don't get the oxidative damage uh, to your foods. And if you're thinking, John, shouldn't they do that in vacuum blending? Absolutely. So they should have a pull a vacuum on it, take out the majority of the volume of air, then they should actually flush with nitrogen to remove the percentages of air even lower to even get higher quality blended goods. But you know, you can't do that yet. But what you can do is once you do blend, uh, you can actually, um, or make a juice, you could actually use this to preserve your juice even longer. Now under nitrogen, you won't have the oxidative damage and think the mold and stuff can't grow because they need more oxygen. So they have several different products that allow you to do this. And you could also use something as simple as a, you know, a mason jar. So they have special mason jar lids that once again, you, you would fill your juice up in there, uh, take their special natural preserve stuff right here, uh, squirt it in here. And uh, basically you're gonna put a layer of uh, nitrogen over the top, display some of the air that's gonna come out the vent tube and now you're gonna be able to store your juice uh, fresher for longer. This is even better than vacuum storing, guys. Now even, uh, you know, there's a lot of applications of this technology, even over and above just fresh juices, right? Some of the things that go bad in my house are the fresh vegetables and especially things like bananas that I buy in bulk, they go ripe before I could actually eat them. So then I peel them and then freeze them, put them in the freezer 
and then I have frozen bananas. But if you want to keep your bananas fresh, they have other systems like this. They have these special bags, and these just aren't any old Ziploc bags. These are the most heavy duty Ziploc bags that you know no air or water could get through. And uh, they have these little uh, uh, vents in there. Once again, you're just gonna put your bananas in here all lined up. You're gonna try to squeeze out as much air as you possibly can in there. Then you're gonna, once again, take the natural preserve, uh, put it in there. Couple squirts, and guess what? Now your bananas are gonna stay fresher longer. Here's actually a test they did, check this out. And, you know, they have a documented, uh, you know, uh, pictures here. So the first day the bananas look like this, you know, they're a little bit green, maybe how you guys buy them. They put one of them off this uh, rack or off the hand into the bag and nitrogen flushed it. And then, uh, you know, just a couple of days later, uh, you know, six days later, you could see the bananas that were out of the bag, totally turned brown. You guys gotta like eat these now. And the other one, look at that. Yeah, you got a few spots on it. So it's uh, ripening significantly slower. Cause the thing is, you know, without all the oxygen, the banana cannot produce as much ethylene gas. I mean, that's not like it's never going to produce no ethylene gas, but it's going to be significantly reduced. So you're going to be able to preserve your bananas and all your fruits and vegetables, cheeses and eggs even longer. So another way you guys could use this system is actually if you just, uh, you know, have a little uh, um, glass bowls like this with lids, you could actually just uh, put the little uh, valve in there. And once again, squirt this out to displace the uh, oxygen. And then you're going to close a little seal there. And now inside here is gonna be a nitrogen, so this is gonna last longer. Really simple, real easy. I wanna show you guys actually another test that they did. Actually, the guy's a farmer or gardener. He grows some of his own food, and here's a test he did, and actually this is really valuable to me, right? Uh, he got his parsley. He bagged it up on 10, 6, 16, and uh, basically five months later, under uh, his nitrogen flushing system, look at that. He still has got a green parsley. Five months later, this stuff's all totally yellow. And he's repeated this test with oregano and sage. And look at the differences, man. So, I mean, if you guys grow your own garden, I always encourage you guys not to harvest your food until the moment you're gonna use it, right? So go out and harvest your sage, come in and use it. Don't just pick it and put it in your fridge forever, right? If you're gonna do that, the best way to store it is actually flush it with some nitrogen. And if you wanna get any of the other components of the system, including the nitrogen gas, or some of the different containers, you can visit them at naturalpreserve.com. And because you're watching me, I've hooked up you guys with a special discount. Just use the coupon code RAW or RAW for a special discount off these products. So another vacuum blender I saw here at the Houseware Show is a Hanzen Ozen vacuum blender. And here it is right here, the Ozen vacuum blender. And uh, that's what it looks like right here, right? And I've checked this out thoroughly as well as a lot of the other vacuum blenders. And you know, this is one of the first ones to market in, in Europe. Actually, it's a fairly popular model, probably one of the first ones to be sold in Europe. But you know what? After looking at the construction of the machine and the price they want for this blender, I would highly discourage you guys from getting this blender. I mean, I want to show you guys one thing real quick here, right? So, I mean, this blender has a vacuum function, right? I'm not going to knock the vacuum function. I think it's amazing that it actually has the vacuum functionality in here because that allows you to preserve more nutrients in the food like you guys saw earlier in my demo. But the challenge with this is that this is pretty much just one of those cheap, in my opinion, $20 blenders you'd buy from Walmart, right? Down here, it just has a plastic, uh, you know, or rubber bushings, and the whole bottom of the base is actually plastic. In addition, uh, down in here where it actually connects to the motor, it's actually also plastic. I mean, this looks like a cheap, really inexpensive piece, and I know with some of the high power blenders, right, you're, this is gonna break off. And so I'm really concerned about the long lasting durability of this blender. In addition, the wattage is actually not so powerful. So it's really not gonna blend up and fractionate and grind up things as well as it could if it was a more powerful blender like some of the other models you guys have seen in this episode. So for that reason, you know, I would encourage you guys against buying uh, the Ozen blender at this time. I look forward to, uh, you know, testing some of the new uh, vacuum blenders and comparing them side by side, including this one, if I'm able to get one later for my uh, in-home testing. Maybe this one's gonna be good, but you know, just from the looks of it, you know, I would definitely save your money. As you guys can see, we've come to the end of this episode today. Pretty much, there's all kinds of equipment, heavy equipment coming in, breaking the show down. It's the end of the show. I've walked pretty much the entire areas that have all the kitchen electrics and all the appliances, and I shared some of those with you guys. Now, you know, before I start getting emails or you start emailing companies about these products, you guys got a special inside look and glance of what is coming out in the future. Some of these guys will come out sooner rather than later, but some of them may not actually come out at all. And, uh, you know, some of them may be delayed. 
uh, I've made every best effort to uh, find out when these products will specifically come out and to uh, share those with you guys, but at this point, they are all estimates. So this may or may not happen. So be aware of that. You know, much like buying a new car, right? You get a new car every year to get the latest model. I mean, if you currently have a different uh, juicer right now and it's working well for you and you like it, you know, keep it. There's no reason to update. But if you're considering buying a new juicer or a new blender, you may want to consider and wait for some of the new machines that I've shared with you because they're the latest in innovation, the latest technology, and they're going to probably perform better than the old ones. I mean, that's generally what happens, right? The newest stuff is always the best, comes out, and it's be better than the old stuff. Not to say that the old stuff isn't good, you know, they've improved it. Every juicer, every blender has its pros and cons, and that's what I try to share with you guys in my videos. You know, I try to make videos that show both the pros and cons of the machines and which one may serve you the best, because in the end, my job is to simply uh, get you guys the machine that's gonna work right the first time, work for you, that you will use every day so that you can start including more fruits and vegetables in your diet and uh, get healthy because of it. So the best way to learn when these products will be out and when they are available is to be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll get advanced previews and I'll get some of these items a few weeks before they actually are released. I will make videos about them to let you guys know that they are now available or will be available. Plus you'll get my personal review. You know, there's always a lot of hype at these shows. Companies make a lot of claims. But once I get the machine tested and share with you guys, you guys will know what's the truth and what's the hype. So be sure to click that subscribe button below and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.